Hello and welcome to the Maureen Bradley Designs YouTube channel. I am Stephanie Reese, your host, and today I wanted to share with you how I made this button and beaded necklace using beads and buttons. Buttons from uh, Dress It Up Shop and beads from Jesse Jane's Beads. First, a few things about what you'll need to make this <clears throat> or the things that I use to make this I have uh, 24 inches of soft flex wire in medium I'm using pink rotocrosite color and I'm using the turquoise color in soft flex um, you're going to need a four inch piece of the rotocrosite the pink rotocrosite soft flex wire for the pendant um, about 9 to 10 inches of this sort of rose silk and then of course buttons with two or four holes excuse me and then buttons with shanks on the back is what I used and then <clears throat> I have this particular mix of buttons the blue buttons came from dress it up buttons it was this mix um, on the Dress It Up Buttons website. Um, it's a mermaid mix, um, and I can put it down in the comments for sure because I'm drawing a blank at the moment. But I have used also this Let's Be Mermaids Coral Queen set uh, for, the, from the, for the beads. And then I also use the Rose Gold Color Trends bead mix from the Jesse James Bead website. And that was these types of beads and some of these gold... Uh, beads as well um, so let's get started oh excuse me and then also you're gonna need two by one crimps and I also used wire guardians in gold okay now we can get started so the first thing I want to do is um, also call out the pliers that I'm using uh, I have a set of cutters and I have um, chain nose pliers and I have the magical crimping pliers that's a ball crimp on the bottom, if you will. It has a ball. Okay. <clears throat> the first thing I want to do is go ahead and make our um, pendant. So I'm going to put this wire off to the side for the moment so you can see what I'm doing. I'm using the four inch piece of pink rotocrosite soft flex wire in order to make this. And I'm going to use the um <clears throat> excuse me this uh, crystal ball bead from the rose gold color trends mix and then also this um pendant this clamshell from the coral queen mix and i'm going to use these buttons one four hole button and then a button with a shank and actually we'll put the button with the shank from the side because we're just going to dangle the pendant off this bottom hole as you can see here. So I'm going to take this wire <clears throat> and I'm going to do the first part right come down here and I'm going to insert it in that bottom hole there like so and then I would like to add just got to find one of the larger little holes here to put everything through and then the trick here too is making sure that we go through and perhaps I should do that first is go through a larger hole and make sure you're equal on all sides of the bead this type of bead so hopefully I have picked a larger hole so that I can fit both wires through and I'm trying to hold it to so that you can see and no, I did not. Uh, okay, let's try this one and see if we picked a larger hole, making sure it's equal on both sides. These beads can be tricky because some of the holes are kind of small. There we go, it's fitting in now. And that's what this looks like. You don't want it to be right up on the button because you want that to move a little bit. And then I'm going to take my two by or one by two crimp and feed it over both wires. If I can 
get that in there for you to see. I'm feeding both the crimp, both of the wires through that crimp. There we go. <clears throat> and then we need for this bottom, that's what we're looking like so far. We want to take this pendant, the clam pendant, and also feed its, its end through the crimp bead so that you'll have the top wire end and the bottom wire end coming through. Whoops, and I just pushed it through. Okay, we'll get this. <clears throat> so let me, I lost it. Let me pull this a little bit further down then. And I'm gonna feed it back through. Sometimes it happens. It's like we get uh, fingers are in the way. There we go. And now we'll try this again where we feed holding all the wires <laughs> holding all the wires with my fingers I'm going to feed that bottom strand into the crimp all right there we go and so I don't want my bead to be right next to the button <clears throat> so that we have some movement um, but I, and I also don't want my pendant to be right next to the bead um, because I'd like a little bit of movement here and I want it to be a little bit long. So you can adjust that and move the ends of the wire up and down until you're satisfied with how you like, how long you want the pendant to be. And I think I'm gonna go with that. So I really like that. That gives me a little bit of movement, maybe a little less down. And then I'll pull this up a little bit more. And I think I have it. There we go. All right, so now I'm gonna take <clears throat> these magical crimp pliers. They make the crimp, that tube, into, and I am, for this purpose, going to push this bead up so that I can see my crimp and also so that you can see it, and I'm going to make sure that none of my wires are twisted inside that tube, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm going to place the crimp inside the ball. All the wires are in there, and I'm gonna clamp down, and it makes a little pillow. I'm gonna turn it and clamp down again, and you're just gonna keep turning inside that crimp so that it, and keep clamping down. And it will eventually, as you turn and clamp down, be formed into the shape of a little ball. It's magical. <laughs> Until I can't feel it being squished down anymore. <clears throat> At some point, you're just, you're not really doing anything because it's been squish down into a little ball, like so. Then um, I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to clip away. I'm going to pull this up and away so that I can get right next to that bead, that little ball crimp. Trash my scrap there. I usually keep most of my scraps, um, but these little bits and ends I kind of tend to toss away if they're not very big. All right, so now that we've made our pendant, this is what it looks like. There we go. This is what we're working with now. Okay, so now we'll go about making the necklace. And you're going to need your soft flex wires and pink rhodochrosite and turquoise. Remember I said it's 24 inches. <clears throat> you can start this necklace up at the top where I've crimped it um, because I want to make sure I'm getting my necklace, my pendant in the middle of my wires because I've already pre-cut. I'm going to go ahead and start in the middle where I'm attaching the shank button on top of here. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure our wires are even.
And for this side, I'm starting on the left for me. And the pink is going to go on the bottom on this side and the turquoise is going to go on the top. And we're just going to sort of weave in the wires through the whole length of the necklace. <clears throat> so the first thing is to add the pink through the side button on the left. And I'm going to add the shank button. And so you can do whichever way. I put the hole at the top on this one. So as you can see, the hole and I'm just going to add the pink wire through the shank button. And then I'm going to take the turquoise wire, trying to hold it down so you can see, and I'm going to feed it through the shank first. Go ahead and take that out. Come around. And then I'm going to go down the opposite side where I pulled the pink rotocrosite up through going down and then pulling my wires through such that you've created this little weave effect. Please take note <clears throat> that you have the pink on top on this side and the turquoise on top on this side. That will become very important when you are weaving the rest of your beads. And it will be, um, if you get them switched, it, your necklace will flip and it will not lay flat. All right, I'm going to go off camera for just a second and make sure that my button is in the middle of my strands. So you're just going to pull a little bit until you get everything in the middle. So I've got my button in the middle, and again, I'm making sure I've got pink on top, turquoise, and then pink, uh, turquoise on this side on top. So you're going to be feeding the wires the same way on each side so your necklace does not flip. All right. Um, so the next thing we're going to feed this hole between the two beads or through the, this bead, through the, both wires will go over it, like so, on both sides. And I'm just going to work both sides, one after the other. So I did the one gold bead, I'll do this side. And I may have picked out too many beads, but we'll see. So remember, you're keeping those wires straight. And you don't have to have it right next to the buttons. I love seeing the, um, the wire showing. All right. So the next one is also another bead on top, or through both wires, rather. And just like that. And then we have one more bead before we weave again. That goes through both wires. And the same on this side. We're going to feed this bead over both wires. All right. Now we are ready to do the next button with the shank. I use these clams. And remember we have pink on top on this side. So what you're going to do, blue will go under and then you'll feed it through the shank and then pink will go through the shank like so and then down. On the opposite side where you brought the turquoise up. weaving it. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Pink on top, blue on the bottom on this side. And then you're just moving it in. And see how it stays and it won't flip on you. 
All right. Okay. And you can adjust your <clears throat> wires as needed. However much wire you want exposed is fine. Okay. So that's how it's going to look when you pull it up as a necklace. Okay. So remember this side, we have turquoise on top. Making sure we have turquoise on top and then pink on the bottom. So you're going to do the pink first because it's going to come under the side of the button and out. And you're going to put your shank button through the pink wire. Leaving like that. <clears throat> and then the turquoise is going to go through your button and down the opposite hole where the pink came up, like so. And you're just going to pull everything snug, like so. And you may have to get everything sort of centered as you go, like that. All right, and now you'll take notice that the wires have switched because you're weaving. On this side, the turquoise is on top and the pink is on the bottom. On this side, the pink is on top and the turquoise is on the bottom. You want to make sure you keep it that way. We're going to go ahead and feed another bead so that it stays in place. Just making sure turquoise is on top. Same thing on this side. pink is on the top. Okay. So it's going to alternate between the pattern. So you just need to make sure you stay with whatever one came out on top, whatever wire came out of the button, you're going to stay with that on top. And then the next time it'll flip again. This way your necklace will stay in upright and it won't flip. Hopefully that's making sense. So now we're going to add the cowrie shell. These cowrie shells do not have holes in them. <clears throat> Excuse me, that would be drilled holes on each side. It's got one big hole down the middle, which makes it perfect for also weaving just like the buttons. So remember turquoise is on top and pink is on the bottom. So I like to start with the wire that's on the bottom going out, going under and out. And with turquoise on top, you're going to go over and down. Again, this is so that your necklace won't flip and your beads and your buttons will stay in place. There we go. And for this time, I'm going to go ahead and add the bead so that it stays in place. I'm adding this pink rondelle, sorry, I went off camera, to this. And now you'll notice that pink is now on top. That way it stays in, in place and it doesn't flop around so you can see what I'm saying. It alternates. Pink came out and now blue is out and now pink is out. So same thing on this side. Pink is coming over the top of this button, so we want to make sure we stay that way. And again, blue is on the bottom, so blue is going to come under and out. <clears throat> the pink is going to go over and out and you'll see that it's switched. And I'm gonna add the pink rondelle 
onto both strands so that it stays in place and I'm going to move everything in. And you can adjust however much wire you'd like to make this. And I'm going to double check. I thought I made this necklace to be, yeah, it's 18 inches. I'm sorry, 16 inches. 8 times 8 is 16. <laughs> All right. So just making sure that I'm not, um, I may have added, I may have brought out too many beads, but I'd rather have more beads and be able to make the necklace than um, not have enough. Okay. So now we're going to add another button. And remember, the pink is coming out over the top. So the blue is going to come under and over. And the pink is going to go over and under. Hopefully you can see that, like so. And then you really can see the weave like this. And then I'm going to go ahead and add the next bead over both wires, which is this brown mermaid bead so that it doesn't flip on me and it stays in place. There we go. There we go. Now this side, the turquoise is on top and the pink is on the bottom. So we're going to come under and over and the turquoise is going to stay on top go over and down like so and we're just going to turn the button so that it stays in place like so I think the key there is to turn the button so that it stays in place there we go that. All right. Everything's looking good. So now we're going to add another button, keeping our wires straight. I have a little bit of that tape that ends up, this was the end of that pink rotocor side, so we just have to remove that little bit of tape off the wire. There we go. And then I'm just going to do a little measurement check to make sure we're not adding. I think we're good. We're doing good. All right. So on this side, turquoise is on top. Pink is on the bottom. So our button, our pink is going to go under the side and over. And then turquoise is going to go up, over, and down on the opposite button. Like so. And then you see how the wires are crossed. I'm just going to turn that bead, or the button, excuse me. And I'm going to move it down. Okay, so we have this side. And then I want to go ahead and add this uh, clear crystal bead. That's a check bead. So pretty. All right, and then <clears throat> on this opposite side, we have the pink wire on top and blue on the bottom. So we're going to add blue from the bottom and over. And the pink, oh, yeah, pink is on top. <laughs> and it's going to come over and down on the opposite hole. And then before you kind of move it down, you're going to rotate that button, like so. And then we're adding the next bead over both wires to keep the button in place. All right, and now you'll see with turquoise coming out on this side and pink, we're rotating the wires switch. Alright, the next button, 
we have pink on the side with blue on the bottom. And then pink on top and down. I'm going to go ahead and finish weaving these in place. I just wanted to make sure you understand how I did this necklace and the weaving portion and I'll be back to finish. One sec. Okay, so I ended up having way too many beads. I had an extra set of buttons and beads. This is um, six and a half inches to, from the button, from the focal button to the rose silk. So I did end up taking those off after I um, saw that. And then I've just been sort of adjusting my wires and making sure I'm good with the space in between because now we are going to be crimping. And you'll be able to adjust the wires um, within that space from the focal to the crimp, but then once you've uh, crimped it, you'll either have to redo it or it'd be done. So I'm happy with how it looks. I'm going to feed this crimp on this side over both of the wires. And then because the turquoise wire is on top, I'm going to feed that wire through the wire guardian and back down the crimp tube. And then we will do the opposite on this side. Since the pink is on the side, we will put the pink wire through the wire guardian. Hopefully that makes sense. And that will keep everything straight and keep everything from uh, wanting to twist around. Oops, there we go. Yeah. Not quite through the crimp tube yet. I'm working on it. All right, there we go. Is that it? I think that's in now. I've got that little end in there. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm just making sure nothing is flipped and my button is straight and then we're just going to drag that wire on down like so and then keep feeding it down until you're happy and you must if you have room in that last bead you most certainly can feed it down that and that will just be a little bit more security and we'll crimp that <coughs> excuse me we'll clip that end piece under the bead instead of right next to the crimp. Sometimes you don't really have a choice. These crimps and the wires are, it's very strong and so I don't worry too much about it, but it's always nice to have that little bit of extra security. All right, so I'm happy with that and how that looks. I fit everything through and you have both wires coming out. And you're going to grab your magical crimping pliers and we're not going to crimp right on that wire guardian we want to make sure that crimp is <clears throat> inside that hole and we're going to clamp down and make that pillow shape and then you're again you're just going to make sure you're not grabbing the bead <clears throat> you can pop smaller beads if you grab the smaller bead and we're going to be clamping and turning around and not grabbing the wire guardian because that will squish those little tubes on top of the softflex wire. There we go. And I believe I have my little ball. And we're done. And so since these strands are a little longer, I'm going to keep those. And I'm all I'm doing is that I'm Cutting that wire next to the bead, and I'm going to keep that one. There we go. So, and then same thing with this one. I'm going to crimp it as close to that ball crimp as I possibly can, and I'm going to keep that scrap because those come in handy 
for other projects. And everything's laying flat. This is what we want. <clears throat> All right. Okay. I'm going to pause the camera, finish the other side, and then we're going to do the rose silk with the shank button. One sec. Okay. I'm back and I want to finish um, with the silk and the other shank button. Um, just letting you know that I went ahead and did the other side with the crimp and the wire guardian and I've made sure that all of my beads are sitting equal on each side. Nothing is flipping. Everything looks good. Just make sure your buttons are in place and we can do the shank now uh, if you will. So again, these are 9 to 10 inches. I think I have one that's longer than the other, which is going to be fine, but I'll go ahead and use this one on this side, and I'm simply inserting this through the water, wire guardian, <clears throat> and I'm pulling my ends equal, and I'm just going to knot it. I'm not moving the knot right on the wire guardian. But giving it a little bit of space there. Uh, just wiggle room is how I'm doing it. There we go. Just like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same on the other one so that they're equal one won't be longer than the other. Again, I'm just doing an overhand knot and I'm just going to move the knot with my fingers right next to um, creating the knot, not right next to the wire guardian, but giving it a little bit of space to move. Little wiggle room. Okay, that's about equal there. We'll leave that. <clears throat> there we go. Just making sure nothing's getting flipped here. Okay. So this side will be my button enclosure and this side will have my shank. So we'll do the button enclosure first and I want this piece to be about 18 inches. So I'm sorry, I keep saying 18, <laughs> 16 inches. So I'm actually just going to give this about, oh, about a half an inch. And I'm going to put another knot where my buttonhole is going to start. So right about there. We don't want to go over too much 16 inches because I don't want it to be too long. And again, I'm just moving this knot into place with my fingers. A little tricky with the silk. Let's see. There we go. Almost there. There we go. And from knot to knot there it's about a half an inch. <clears throat> okay. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side because on this side it's going to start where I actually put my button. So about a half an inch. And I'm going to just move it into place with my fingers, moving it down, pulling and moving down, making sure there's no buckle to knot to knot is about half an inch, making sure that it's tight. Okay, good. And then sometimes things can get flipped when you're doing the knot. So just making sure none of my pieces are flipping on me. Okay. <clears throat> so now on this side, I'm going to tie another knot, but I want my button to fit through like so. So that is how much space you need for the other knot. And you want it to just slide over. So about like that. I think that'll be good. Ooh, getting short on space, but that's all right. We're all right. I didn't waste any, and that is always the goal. Okay, so 
So I'm just going to put that in there. And then you may have to, what I like to do is sort of, as I'm moving the knot in, I'm sort of measuring again where my button's going to go and making sure that it's it has an, enough space that you don't want it too big, but then you don't want it to be too small because then it'll wear the silk out. <clears throat> All right, I think that's good. All right, so that's where we're going to stand with that on that end. And then on this side, I'm going to add my button. One end of the silk, making sure I'm on screen here, one end of the silk is going to go through the button. Will it go through for me? Yes. Like so. And I'm just going to move that next to the knot. And then I'm simply going to tie another knot next to an overhand knot next to the shank. Like so. And again, just moving it, inching it closer to the shank and next, right next to that other knot there. Just making sure you can see if I can get keep my hands out of the way. I just want to move it close to, right up next to that shank before we pull it tight. There we go. I just inched it like so so that it's got like a knot on each side of the shank. See that? This is on top. Like so. Perfect. And that is your button necklace. This will go over the top. Like so. And I will trim away. Sort of want those to be even. Grab my scissors here. I forgot to tell you, you're gonna need scissors as well. And I'll just trim those at an angle so that they're about equal. And there we go. Your necklace. That is the necklace, the button necklace with the shank. I hope that you enjoyed this today. I enjoyed being with you. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.